By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are in Tokyo, Japan, and we're going to look at the finals of their yearly old school magic the gathering tournament and it's very exciting we've got two very good players we've got kun kun who's playing robots white blue black robots and he's taking on an atok deck that's piloted by madori maru and both of these are players and i should say the entire tournament was based on the eternal central rules so just a really quick recap what does that mean it means you can play with four uh, strip mine it means you can play with uh, fallen empires and that mana burn is real that's just kind of in a nutshell the main differences with other rule sets that you've seen here on the channel now if you want to know more about eternal central rules check out the description below for all the ins and outs now before i continue i would first like to mention that i have a patreon page and the reason I want to mention that early in the video is to let you know that if you enjoy the content that I'm making, that there is an option to support me and support what I'm doing, support Timmy Talks. It's quite easy. Just visit patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And for just $1 a month, you can become a patron of the channel. And with that, you're really supporting me as a content creator. And you're also getting something back. Your name will be mentioned at the end of the end scroll in every single video and of course you'll get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and you can join into any online tournaments that I organize on Timmy Talks. So that's quite a lot, right? For just one dollar. So if you have a moment to visit patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, and now let's move forward with this specific match. I'm gonna start with the deck text and as always you can also choose to skip this and go to the matches first. I know some people enjoy doing that. The easiest way to do that is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps one of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the action. And here I'm going to continue with the deck tech and I'm gonna start with the robots deck by Kun Kun. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Kun Kun. So this is a three color deck that's all about the colorless cards because it's really a robots deck, right? A traditional robots deck. And it's really good in Eternal Central because you can play with four Mishra's Workshops. We also see four of those lands in this deck. Of course, this land is bonkers, incredibly strong. It's kind of like, for me, it feels like the Black Lotus of Antiquities. It's a land, um, it comes into play. You can tap it to add three colorless mana. But there is a little catch. You can only use it to cast artifacts. I really love that flavor. But of course, it's really good in this deck because you've got cards like Tetravis, Triskelion, Suchi, also, of course, your, your Icy Manipulators. You want to use those to kind of, you want to use the, the Mishra's Workshop to kind of deploy those threats as quickly as possible and really get your opponent into trouble. And then on top of that, he's also playing with copy artifacts, one blue and one for this enchantment that allows you to copy any artifact on the battlefield. This, of course, great, right? So you've got a workshop out, you play out your trike, maybe turn two, you know, maybe turn three, and then you start copying it like crazy with your copy artifacts. That means you've got a lot of damage on the board really quickly. I also think that trike in this matchup is going to be quite good because you're playing against Atom right so you want to maybe use those counters to kill the atog and put your opponent in like a difficult position where he has to choose do i want a second artifact to save my atog yes or no right in like an awkward position probably so i i i think it's looking really good talking about destroying creatures he's also playing with the abyss which is of course a killer enchantment if you're playing with a lot of artifact creatures it's a world enchantment for one black and three that reads at the beginning of each player's upkeep, destroy target non-artifact creature that player controls of their choice and it cannot be regenerated. So, you know, guess what? Kun Kun is playing with zero artif uh, non-artifact creatures, so he doesn't have to worry about the Abyss. This is really a one-sided uh, kill spell that is an enchantment, right? So every single turn of his opponent, he has to sacrifice or destroy, I should say, one of his own creatures, which could be quite tough. He's got an extra abyss in the sideboard as well. And then, of course, he's playing with kind of the white control cards. He's playing with Disenchants and Armageddon, which is quite nice, right? This Armageddon kind of shows a little bit of the aggression of Kun Kun's strategy. He just wants to get out a robot quickly, you know, and maybe then even just you know, wipe the board, wipe the lance, I should say, with the Armageddon. Because when he's ahead, he's ahead, you know, just wipe the board, start fresh, and, you know, maybe 
find a blue mana and, and a colorless mana and start copying your one threat on the board and kind of have control that way. So it's quite aggressive. What I also like about this here is that he's not playing with Swords to Plowshares main. He's really chosen to go with more threats. He's playing with, for example, four Icy Manipulators that can take out a creature as well. He could have chosen to board those out and play with Swords instead, but he's chosen to really go heavy on the artifact route and I guess paid off because he's here in the finals. Now, this is the deck of Kun Kun. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Midori Maru, our other finalist. So this is an Atok deck, right? We see four Atoks in the deck, but there is more happening. First of all, he's not playing it mono red like a lot of Atok decks do. He's playing it blue, black, and red. And because he's playing black, I guess it gives him kind of the opening to play with Setch Trolls. We see four Setch Trolls in this deck as well. Now Setch Troll is a super annoying creature to play against because it's a 2-2, but when you have a Swamp in play or a duel that's also a Swamp, right? Like an Underground Sea or a Batlands, then, you know, it gets plus one, plus one. So it becomes a 3-3 three, three for three mana, which is a lot of value. And you can also regenerate it for one black. So it's really difficult to deal with it. I think the Abyss, by the way, in the deck of Kun Kun is a really good answer to it. But if he doesn't have the Abyss, it could be quite annoying to play against these trolls. Then, of course, he's playing with a lot of artifacts because Atog is a hungry creature, right? It wants to eat. So Atog, creature from antiquities, one red and one to cast. Second artifact, it's a one, two. Second artifact, it, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So what you see here is that that whole second row or all artifacts, they're all like snacks for the Atok, right? We see four Vice, we see three Ank of Mishra. I always like that Ank and Vice. I think it's really cool synergy. You know, you've got your Black Vice, which means your opponent is being punished for keeping cards in hand. Then you've got your Ank of Mishra, which means your opponent is being punished when he or she plays out a land, you know, two damage per land. So that's pretty cool. And then we see, of course, Chaos Orb. We see all the Moxen. I think if you play Atok, you kind of need all the Moxen, you know. I know it's fancy, but I mean, the Atok likes to dine fancy. And I mean, having a zero artifact mana costing artifact, that's also good, but it's also like a plus two, plus two spell basically for your Atok. So it's really, really good in the Atok deck. Then we also see two other artifacts, the Black Lotus and the uh, Soul Ring. And then, of course, we see the blue power uh, in the form of the Time Walk, the uh, Time Twister, and of course, the Ancestral Recall. The only other two blue cards that he is playing is Psionic Blast. He's playing a lot of direct damage. Like this is, this is a difficult deck to play against. I think if he has like a Vice turn one and he's on the play, it means your opponent is probably going to take three from the Vice alone. He's on 17. And then you've got four Bolts, three Chains, and you've got two Psionic Blasts. You can just do a lot of direct damage. There's also an Earthquake in here. There's, I mean, you can win it on direct damage alone. So if you can just get like an early vice, get a little bit of damage in with your creatures, you can finish the rest off with direct damage. And that's exactly what makes this deck so difficult to play against, you know? And I think for the robots player, he doesn't have any life gain in the deck. Maybe he could consider of after the first game, you know, boarding the swords, maybe sorts his own creature to gain some life. But, you know, he doesn't have like spirit links or something. So there's really no way for him to, to gain life, which is really good news here for the Atok player. Um, and then when we're looking at the sideboard, which is really sweet, we see some really nice altars in the sideboard and actually a lot of black cards in the sideboard I'm noticing because main board, he's only playing the demonic tutor and the mind twist, right? Main, which is kind of, I understand, but it's kind of like the boring splash, uh, understandable splash because they're super good cards, but not all that exciting. Um, but then on the sideboard, we see Glooms, we see Terrors, cards that are probably not going to get in in this matchup, by the way. We see a beautiful Altar to Dark Ritual. I'm really liking the Altar. And a really nice Altered Maze of it. Perhaps that Maze is going to see some play. And of course, the Shatters will probably come in after uh, game number two. Uh, sorry, game number one, of course, because then after you can sideboard. Anyway, uh, this is the deck here of our second finalist, Midori Maru. And uh, we've talked about the deck of his opponent, and that means we're ready. Let's go to the finals of the Japanese Old School Championships 2023. Kun Kun versus Midori Mari. Game number one, here we go. So the player on the left is Kun Kun. He's playing robots today. He's taking on an Atok deck. Look at the Atok deck go, by the way. And that's Midori. And he's playing uh, red, blue, black Atok. So he's played that uh, black vice, meaning three points of damage here for Kun Kun, dropping to 17. And of course, Kun Kun wants to empty his hand quickly here, playing a copy artifact on the Mox Emerald and passes the turn. That's a good decision, meaning less damage for him next turn. Five cards in hand, I believe. There we see a strip mine here by Midori. Both players playing quite fast. 
I believe I see an ATOG there in hand for Midori. Could be considering deploying it. Looks like he's making some decisions. Could potentially use the strip mine to strip to duel here. Oh, he's got another line playing a time twister, which is understandable, of course. It's gonna, you know, mean three more damage here for Kun Kun next turn. So he will drop to 14. I'm gonna try to keep track of the life totals, by the way, since there are no dice here on the battlefield. We do have that cool duelist uh, life gain apparatus there. And now both players are going to draw seven new ones. And of course, it's still Midori's turn. So let's see if he can maybe find some Moxen here in the deck, playing with the older Moxen and a Black Lotus in the deck. Passing the turn here to Kun Kun. Kun Kun dropping here some more... Uh, Lotus, uh, sorry, sorry, some more Mox in here after, of course, taking the three damage, dropping to 14, playing a uh, Mox Sapphire and a Mox Jet. So he's got five mana now. Didn't drop a land yet. I believe I see a Suchi there in hand. I see a Factory. Looks like he wants to play out the Scrubland, taking it back. A little bit in the tank, asking about the amount of cards in the hand of Midori. Midori, Midori still having seven. After that time twister. Interesting, they're putting some cards away. So he's got six in hand. He's got the Suchi there. He's going to play out the Suchi. Still having mana open. Four cards in hand means no more damage for him next turn. Let's see what uh, Midori can do now. Eight cards in hand. So I'm sure he's got a lot of options. Tapping the Mox here first. There's his Soul Ring, so he's got four mana available. Didn't drop a land yet. Okay, there's the land for turn, a Volcanic Island. Tapping three. Psionic Blast here, taking care of business. That's mean he's gonna take two damage. It also means four mana burn points of damage for Kun Kun, so he's gonna drop to 10 here. And we can see Midori here dropping to 18. There's another Vice not doing much though. Kun Kun only having four cards in hand. Now five after the draw step. But I mean, it is getting risky here for Kun Kun. Just, just because he's on 10. And remember, his opponent here is playing with tons of burn. There's the Abyss. So that's an annoying card, but it's not pressure. And I think what you want to do now, if you're Kun Kun, you want to try to put some pressure on the life total of Midori because the more draw steps you give him, the more chances he's got of drawing into more direct damage. I believe he still has got a, he still has a bolt there in hand as well. So he could put uh, Kun Kun here on seven. Remember, he's on 10 at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. And Midori's still on 18 life. Looks like he's going to play out a strip mine. So remember, we're playing Eternal Central Rules. So that means we have Mana Burn, we've got Fallen Empire, but also we have a format where you can play with four Strip Mines. And there we see a Strip Mine on the Volcanic. In response, we see a Bolt here from Midori, meaning Kun Kun is going to drop to seven. He's really, really in the danger zone here. Going to draw a card. He's got a Setstral in hand there. And I thought I saw an Atok earlier, but perhaps I was mistaken. This is really a great card here, Ang of Mishra. Although, I mean, Kun Kun's got enough mana sources anyway, so he's probably not going to play out any more lands. If he does, though, it's going to cost him two life. So every time you play out a land, uh, you now take two damage because of that Ang of Mishra. And there's a Strip Mine. So Strip Mine works quite nice with the Ang of Mishra, right? There we see an Armageddon perhaps in hand, if I'm not mistaken. Doesn't have any white sources though. So if he wants to play white, he has to play out a land first. That will cost him two life. He will drop to five, which is super risky, right? You're playing against a deck with four bolts and he is doing it though. So he's going to drop to five. Does that mean that we're going to see an Armageddon? No, we're not. Another bolt It's going to drop to two. Perhaps that white card is a disenchant, by the way, and not an Armageddon. Probably is the latter. Well, he's got two white cards there. It's really hard to see. One of them is definitely a disenchant. There's a Wheel of Fortune, and this wheel is probably going to give him the victory here. What he could do now, though, is disenchant, take care of one of the vices. He's on two, though. Exactly. That's it. 
No outs here for Kun Kun and he could really see the strength of Midori's direct damage. He doesn't really need his creatures. It's called an Atok deck, but actually the Atok is not always necessary. Anyway, both players are now going to dive into their sideboards. We can already see Kun Kun there looking at his swords to plowshares and kind of concluding that maybe he needs those as some life gain. Anyway, we're gonna leave these players to uh, sort out their sideboards and we're going to catch up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So we've got Kun Kun this time on the play after of course losing that first game. And Midori on the draw here. So again, I'm gonna keep track of the life totals for you guys. Both players of course now still on 20. I do see, I think, a Mishra's workshop there. Looks like he's going to open it with a City of Brass. Then perhaps next turn play the workshop and play out a Artifact for four if he has it in hand, of course. Let's first see what Midori can do. Playing out a lot of mocks in there and a Volcanic Island. A Black Lotus. Okay, what are we going to see here turn one? He's got an Atok. He's got some options. Also has an Ankh of Mishra. That Ankh is looking quite good here, actually. Because Ankh, you know, remember, every time you play a land, you take two damage. And I mean, you know, Kun Kun only having one land on the battlefield is probably going to play a land next turn. That means just two more damage there in the pocket. Let's see. I mean, he's thinking probably about sacking the Lotus because maybe he wants to play and the Ankh and the, uh, the Atok here. I mean, it seems like a pretty hefty price to pay, you know, sacking the Lotus for that. Then again, you know, you have optimal pressure. Ooh, look at that. He is doing it. Oh, he's got a Demonic Tutor in hand as well. So making three black with the Lotus, one black still floating. What is he going to find? Is it simply going to be an Ancestral Recall, kind of trying to refill his hand? Or is it going to be something else? Could also be a, a Time Twister, of course. That could be a good option. It would be nice, though, if... If he chooses a Time Twister, it would be better for him if he would have had like one extra land because, or one extra mana, I should say, because then he could, you know, play out the Atok or the Ank and then play the Time Twister. Tapping two here. What are we going to see? Yep, there's the Time Twister. Shuffling everything back in, which is, of course, a great deal here for, uh, for Midori because he's got three permanents there on the battlefield. And remember, he still has one untapped ruby. So if he finds a vice, you know, he can deploy the vice. That means more damage for Kun Kun. Of course, I don't know if the black vice is still in his deck. What you see sometimes with players is when they're on the play, they take out the vice. But I think when I'm looking at Midori's list, he's probably going to keep in the vice because he's got so many draw sevens. And I mean, it's just such a good card for him. Also with the Atox synergy. So exactly, it's in his hand here. He kept it in. Makes absolute sense playing it out right now. And the Black Lotus is back as well. It's looking quite good here for Midori. That's bad news, of course, for Kun Kun, who's already down a game. Has to win this to stay in it. Gonna drop it to 17, of course, because of the vice. Gonna take a life here from the City of Brass. Look at that. Oh, man. A mind twist for one. I kind of feel here for Kun Kun. Of course, he's doing this because he wants to empty his hand, but he's very unfortunate not finding any mocks in here or any other way to kind of ramp up. I mean, he's got a lot of Triskelions in hand, but they're simply too slow. Here we see Midori deploying another threat here in the form of a Setch Troll. Okay, this is something. So we see the workshop. Can he do something? He doesn't have a four artifact though. He only has those strikes. There's six. He just needs one more mana. If he could have, for example, a soul ring, you know, he would be there. One mox, he would be there. He could start playing out his um his strikes. And of course, he also took another damage, I believe, from the vice. So he's on 15 at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. Midori's still on 20. Oh, he's got Ancestral Recall, yeah. I know that feeling when you play against Vice, you draw into Ancestral Recall. It's still a great card, but you're just not as happy with it as you usually are. There's the attack for three. Looks like he's going to animate the factory here. Very risky. Now, remember, the Ancestral is still a 2-2 because there's no swamps. He's going to take the damage. You're going to drop to 13. There's an Atok. And a pass turn. Okay, and he's going to take some more damage here. From the Black Vice. I believe one point of damage. He's on 12 now. There's the Underground Sea. And that's enough mana. Finally, he can start playing out 
his strikes. He does take a damage from the City of Brass. He's now on 10, or actually 11, if I'm correct. So three counters on that. This is really good news for Kun Kun. Finally, he can do something back. He's got a blocker. It's going to be tough, though. Because next turn, I'm sure Midori is going to attack with both. Going to put him in an awkward spot. Ooh, we also see a Psionic Blast in hand. Is he going to play the Psionic Blast here on the Trike? Yeah, Psionic Blast on the Trike. So he's going to drop to 18. And now, of course, Kun Kun has to make a decision. I think... I would probably just kill the Setch here. Exactly. It sounds strange, but if you kill the Atok, all that, that's going to happen though. Oh, of course, you can sack the Lotus for three black to regenerate it. It does mean he takes two points of damage from Mana Burn. Going to go to 16. Or is he going to use it? So, okay, he's going to use it to cast something. So he's actually going to stay on 18 here, casting an Ankh of Mishra. And of course, he can still attack with the Atok. It's looking really bad for Kun Kun here. I mean, this game too, he just couldn't get it off the ground, it seems. One point of damage, dropping here to 10. Don't think he takes any damage from the Vice, but it's hard to see, of course, uh, the amount of cards in hand here. Does he have six in hand? Two, four, six. So he took a damage in that case from the Vice because he had five before drawing. So he's on nine at the moment. There we see a card from the side for Blue Elemental Blast, countered by a Red Elemental Blast, though. Oh, man. This is just bad news upon bad news here for Kun Kun. There's really no way out for him here. He's on 9. And because he played the Blast, he doesn't have enough mana anymore to cast a Trike. What he could do is play another land, but then he takes 2 points of damage from the Ankh. But does he really have another choice? I think he kind of has to. Would mean he drops his 7. I mean, this is just not Kun Kun's match so far. Yeah, there's another City of Brass. And I've got to laugh because that's a pain land. That's not what you want to do. So now you take two damage from the Ankh, two damage from the City of Brasses. That means you're now on five. I mean, it's almost it's almost game over here. This is super tough here for, uh, for Kun Kun. I mean, you're just taking so much damage so quickly. And, and, you know, the first points of damage are kind of okay with it. You know, the first three points from the Vice. But it just adds up, you know. Also, the City of Brass damage, Ankh of Mishra damage. And now you're on five against, uh, you know, a direct damage deck, basically. This is a huge problem here. Oh, of course, there we see the Wheel of Fortune. Just like in game one, it also gives the victory in game number two to Midori. And that means that he is our champion here in Japan, in Tokyo. So the uh, Japanese old school champion of 2023. Congratulations here to you, sir. And uh, your deck is looking very, very fierce. It's kind of scary. Yeah. And one of the things I've noticed in this matchup is I don't play a lot uh, of Eternal Central and I'm always worried about the mana base because it's a format that allows for strips. But as you can see in this match, actually, the strip mines weren't really that important. They didn't do a lot in this specific matchup. So that was uh, very interesting for me to see as well. Anyway, uh, those are just my two cents. Again, congratulations here to Midori for uh, winning the championships here. Let me know if you like old school from Japan and maybe uh, I'll show you guys some more action from this tournament. Who knows? Anyway, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, please, before you go, take a moment to like this video, share it on your socials and leave a comment. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And of course, we also have our very own Patreon program. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out how you can become a patron of Timmy Talks and how you can support me to continue making this content for you guys. Okay, now that that is all out of the way, it means we are ready to go to the magnificent, amazing end scroll of Timmy Talks. Let's look at all those fantastic patrons and channel members. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Ik het als fik het als samba kan zien.